Isaiah 46, 6 says that our righteousness is like filthy rags. I won't get into what filthy rags actually translate into, but I will get into this. Sometimes we try to be good Christians or try to be people who are worthy of salvation or redemption. And our thinking gets kind of messed up in that process because pretty soon we start acting like we're earning our salvation with the good things that we're doing. And that's called religion. Religion is trying to access things. It's the knowledge of good and evil and trying to use that to attain godhood or sainthood or some kind of hood, I guess. And, and the thing with, the, the, the problem I have with religion is the Bible actually defines religion as this in James. It says, pure and true religion is to take care of widows and orphans in their time of need and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. So it's basically doing good works and being pious. The only problem there is even pure and true religion can't save you because there's no relationship. My wife loves to go to Olive Garden. And I know that it's really easy to make her happy when we go into a bigger city that has an Olive Garden if I take her to Olive Garden for lunch or supper. That seems pretty easy. And uh, I don't mind Olive Garden myself, but there's probably other places I'd rather go. Yet at the same time, I love her and I have a relationship with her. And because we have a good relationship with her, I want to do things that make her happy. I don't take her to the Olive Garden because I feel forced to. We don't sit there and I don't go, oh, I just absolutely hate this place. This disgusts me. But I hope you're happy. Get whatever you want. I guess, oh, I guess I have to order something off this menu that I don't like. That's religion. When people try to do things to try to please somebody, but it doesn't really come out of love. It doesn't really come out of, man, I just, I want to please you. It becomes a religious act. It becomes pharisaical and not real. And you see a lot of people who are trying to be religious. They're trying to follow certain traditions and certain rites and certain orders in order to earn some deity's respect or in order to try to please other people. Uh, but the truth is they themselves are miserable. And that's the misery of religion. If you don't have a relationship with who you're trying to please, if you don't have that love that flows between you, it can be real misery. And that's where a lot of people are trapped. They don't go from the fact of knowing that their righteousness, their works, they amount to this, filthy rags. There's nothing that you can do to redeem yourself in the eyes of a God who's holy. What holy means is holy means set apart. It means different, sacred, odd, not like all the sheeples and everybody else. But you see, the way to really understand holiness isn't to try to act holy, or isn't to try to do man-made perceptions of holiness. It's to try to get close enough to God that you know his heart. Just like I know what pleases my wife. When I get close enough to her to have a relationship with her, I know the things that she likes. If I want to make her happy, I know a box of red vines will do that. The reality of knowing God is having a relationship with him. It's getting closer to his heart. And pretty soon, the closer you get to him, the more you realize that some of the things that you thought you had to do in order to follow him, they're not necessarily realities as much as they are religious traditions. Saul tried to put armor on David before he went and fought Goliath. And David threw the armor off and said, I can't use this man! This will kill me. This will weigh me down. This isn't the way I flow. David knew exactly what to do because God had given David some unique skills and unique abilities. And he went and grabbed those rocks out of that stream. He took that one that was for Goliath. He swung his slingshot. Boom. Nailed that giant right in the head. If you're a servant of God, you should be working on that relationship with him. Keep this in mind. He who brags just brags of filthy rags because there's really nothing that you can say to say, hey, look, I'm a Christian because I do this and I do that. It doesn't matter if you're the Dalai Lama or if you're an Amish woman or if it doesn't matter how puritanical you want to be. The key is relationship. A good illustration is this. Let's say there's a brand new club that opens up in your neighborhood and it is the hottest place to be and you're dying to get in there. 
So for a whole month, you hit the gym and you go to the most expensive store that you can. You finance some brand new clothes so you can look your hottest and you just, you're rocking it and you know that night you're going to get in because of all the work that you've done. And standing in front of you, like just a couple places in line, is a celebrity like Justin Timberlake, okay? And you're like really excited because you're like, man, this is going to be such an awesome night because I'm, I'm so good looking and I got my, I got my right clothes on, man, and, and JT is just right, right in front of me, man. This is going to be so hot. And all of a sudden, this, this slob, okay, dressed in frumpy clothes, uh, overweight, kind of looks like me, maybe. He walks up and says, hey, JT, what's up, buddy? And Justin slaps him high five and says, hey, I haven't seen you around, Trent. What's going on? And, and they're talking, and all of a sudden, the bouncer, uh, JT, comes in line and says, oh, hey, JT, you go in. Is that your buddy? All right, you guys get in there. And then he puts the thing back up, and then it comes to you. And he's like, I'm sorry, uh, uh, we're booked up, we're full tonight. You'd be really angry. And the reason you'd be really angry is because you did all this work, you purchased all these fancy clothes and financed them even when you couldn't afford them, and you didn't get into the club. And some stupid slob comes up, and because he knows JT, boom, he gets right in. You see, that's the difference between religion and relationship. When you have a relationship with Christ, when you accept what he did 2,000 years ago on the cross, and you begin to, to say, Jesus, I want to walk with you every day and talk with you every day. I want to shape my life according to yours because I love you. All of a sudden, when rough times come, you just go, I'm with him. And you're getting in. But there's a lot of people that aren't with him. There's a lot of people that are saying, hey, you know, the way that I can really do this is if I act perfect here and I look good here and I do this and I do that right. Well, no wonder they're frustrated. No wonder they're so cranky. No wonder they're so arrogant. You see, you can't do it. What you're doing, you think you've got the most expensive garment in the world and it's just filthy rags. See, that relationship means much more than religion. Religion will lead you away from God. But relationship will lead you to the center of God's heart. See, there's a lot of people messed up today because they have religion, but they don't have a real relationship. And the people who do have religion, they look at the people who have a relationship and go, How's he getting in? That ain't fair. He doesn't have the right clothes on. Swung his swing. <laughs> swung his swing. Swung his swing.